I'm a professional software engineer with almost a decade of experience working at companies like Uber, Flexport, and Intuit. And today I'm going to show you how to use a tool called Olama to get almost any large language model up and running on your own machine in under five minutes. You don't need to worry about paying for an OpenAI subscription, nor do you have to worry about paying for any sort of cloud hosting. And if you stick around until the very end, I'll show you how to use this tool to customize your very own model. So let's get to it. Hi, my name is David and welcome to Decoder, a brand new channel all about machine learning, large language models, and more. Olama is an open source tool created by an ex-Twitter, Docker, and Google engineer named Jeffrey Morgan. It allows us to easily download and run models, chat with them in our command line, serve them over an API, and even create and customize models with our own system prompts and attributes. Installation is really easy. You just go to olama.ai and click download. Then once you run the installer, you should see the Olama icon in your menu bar right up here. From there, we're now able to use the Olam command in our terminals. Okay, so now that we have Olama installed, let's explore it a bit. Try typing Olama into our terminal. So this shows us basically what the help command is, and it shows us different commands that we're able to run, including help itself. Um, let's start off by just listing the models that we currently have installed. And it looks like there's nothing here. So I guess a good place to get started is by downloading our first model. Let's pull a new model from the library on the website. So to do that, we just navigate back to the website, go to models, and here you should see a bunch of models that may sound familiar to you. Mistral has been pretty popular. Mixtral is another one. But I'm going to use a model that I really like called Phi by Microsoft. I like Phi because it's really small but really capable. So regardless of what your system is, it should probably be able to run this. Um, as we scroll through this page, we see it gives us some example prompts, um, how to use it in the API, um, and some other different use cases like code completion or text completion. So I'm just going to copy this command right here that they gave us and paste it in. So the first thing that it's going to do is look up the manifest and actually download the file. This one's pretty small, but some models can get up to even like 50 gigabytes. So depending on what you're trying to do, be prepared to wait for a while for that. OK, and so now we are chatting with our new model that we just downloaded. I'm going to ask it, what is water made of? And wow, that response was super fast. So it told us, water is composed of two hydrogen atoms bonded with one oxygen atom. And that is correct. Um, that was really good. But one thing to call out is that smaller models like this one can run really, really quickly. Uh, however, they may struggle with some even basic questions and may get off topic or even hallucinate. Um, but now you know how to explore new models, download them, and run them all on your own. So it's a huge first step for us. In addition to chatting with our model over the command line like we were just doing, Olama also exposes an API so we can um, interact with our model programmatically as well. I'm going to use a tool called curl that allows me to make HTTP requests to arbitrary endpoints. So to break it down, here's the tool curl. Um, here's the endpoint that we're calling. This is the one that's exposed by Olama. Um, and then the, this flag D here just means that we're passing data. And the data that we're passing are just argu arguments for Olama. So we're telling it which model we want to interact with, which is fly. Um, our prompt, what is water made out of? And stream false just means that instead of streaming the response back to us one word at a time, we just want everything all at once. And then JQ just helps me to format it better. And here's our response. We got a bunch of stuff back. But the main thing that we care about is this actual response element that says water in its most common form on Earth is made up of two hydrogen atoms bonded with one oxygen atom. So again, that's correct. But if we look at some of this other stuff here, it's not useless to us now. Um, but if we were running our own web app, I think this stuff could be very handy for us. But we'll keep that in mind for the future. So leaving curl and going back to our chat, let's exit the chat and try some different things. So you can just exit the chat with Control D. And now we're in a clean session here. So let's ask Olama again what we can do with it. Olama help. Um, and in this case, I am curious about learning more about the model that we just downloaded. So let's do Olama help show. So this tells us we can run show with a model name and then some flags. Now, we'll these flags are interesting, but the main one that we care about is the model file, because the model file itself actually contains the parameters, the system message, and the template. The model file essentially defines what a model is, um, how it works, and where it lives. So let's do that now. Olama show by model file. All right, and so this is what Phi's model file looks like. Let's take this line by line, because there's a bunch of stuff here. On the top, this is commented out. If you're familiar with Python, that's kind of the syntax that we're using. Um, and so it says this model file was generated. If we want to build a new model file, which is very interesting, 
um, we can basically just replace the from line with this line that it gives us right here. And then everything beneath that is what we're going to be looking at. So we see a couple major section headers here. We see from, template, system, and parameter. From uh, seems to just give us the sort of like location of the memory on our computer where the blob that we downloaded, that 1.6 gigabyte thing is, just where that lives on our machine. And then for parameters, we're going to ignore that because that's a bit more advanced. But what we really care about here is the template and the system prompt. Um, if you're familiar with prompting, basically there's a couple different inputs that you can have. You can have the user prompt, which is like the question that I just asked, but you can also have the system prompt. And that system prompt kind of sets the scene, it defines to the model what it is and how it's supposed to interact. So if we look at our system prompt here, it says, a chat between a curious user and an artificial intelligence assistant. The assistant gives helpful answers to the user's questions. And then in our template, the template composes different types of prompts. Um, together into one sort of like message that starts the chat off with. So here we have this if block. It says if there's a system prompt, then queue up the system and then input whatever that prompt is. Next it says, here's the user speaking. The user says whatever the user prompt is. And then finally it says, now it's the assistant's turn. Okay, um, Phi model, you can take over and speak as the assistant. So I think it'd be really interesting if we took that model file and customized it the way that we wanted to. So what I'm going to do is start by copying that model file that we just looked at into our own file. So here we go, show phi model file, which is exactly what we were just doing. And then this little caret means that we copy into a new file. And I'm going to name our file our model file, because what I want us to do is to make a custom model that talks like a pirate. Because I think pirates are more fun than robots, don't you? OK, and so now if we look at our system, we see that we have this new model called our model file. I'm going to open that up in my editor, which is right up here. So let's hide this. So now here we are in our text editor, and we just have exactly the same content as we had before, which is what we expect. But what we want to do is to change the system prompt to not just be an artificial intelligent assistant, but to be an artificial intelligent assistant that speaks like a Pirate. Okay, so let's save that. And then we can actually just exit out of it and return to our nice little terminal session here. Okay, and so now for the fun part. Let's go back to our terminal. Let's use olama help again. And what we're looking for here is create. So olama help create. And it looks like the command is olama create the model name and then the flags. And the only flag that we really care about here is this file. And we're going to be passing in the file that we just created. OK, so we're going to paste in our command. And it's going to do its process. It's going to transfer the model data. It's going to see what it can get rid of, uh, what it can reuse. And here we go. Our command ends in success. So that mean, that should mean that we have a new model. So if we do olama list, then this is perfect. So we see we have our original phi model that we downloaded, but we also have this new model that we just defined, our phi. So let's see if it works. OK, and so now we're going to run our model file and ask it the same question. Olama run r phi. What is water made of? Ahoy there, matey. Water, as you know, is one of the three stages of matter. It does actually define it as two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So there we go. We both have a model that answers us correctly, but it also does what we tell it to and talks like a pirate. So now that you know how to use Olama, I'm really curious to see what you do with it. What are your favorite models to play around with? What sort of prompts have you found most effective? Um, as you've gotten into it, are there any sort of like settings or configuration that you think that I should talk about in upcoming videos? In future videos, I'm going to build on this Olama knowledge, both to dig deeper into how Olama works behind the scenes and how we can customize it, um, but also how we can use Olama to build up and power things like document chatting and things like that. Thanks for joining me for my first ever video. To see what else I'm working on, please be sure to like and subscribe.